with the Newsweek Zone. Welcome to another enthralling episode of On The Button with me, professional sports journalist Angus McStone. Now my guest today has already won a Tim Hortons briar. He's already been a world champion. Now he's entering his second Tim Hortons Roar of the Rings, but for the first time as Skip. Some know him as Reed Arama. We know him as Reed Carruthers. <laughs> hey, how are you doing? Good to see you, Reed. That is quite a juicy beard you've got there. I'm, I'm very admirable of it. Do you have any tips to keep it so lush and full? I mean, look at mine. That looks like I've been dragged through a field. I, I like it. I, I think it's a great look for you. To me, it's just more about a little bit of grooming. Grooming it is. Look out, ladies. 2016-17 <laughs> was a great season for Team Carruthers. Knowing that you're already into the, uh, the 2017 Tim Hortons Roar of the Rings, how did that change the way that you perhaps prepared for this season? We've done literally everything we can to get ourselves into as good a shape as we can leading up to the season and just to enjoy the experience of it all. This is not going to be your first time at the Tim Hortons Roar of the Rings. In 2013, you were there with Jeff Stoughton's team, but this is your first year that you're going to be there as a skip. Yeah, I think uh, my approach has changed just a little bit. You know, I learned a lot from the experience playing with Team Stoughton over that four-year period, and especially the Roar of the Rings in Winnipeg, watching Team Jennifer Jones, who happens to be close friends of mine, getting to see how they approached it versus the way we approached it. I, I want to take a little bit of what they did and bring it to my own team. When you were at that World Financial Group uh, Continental Cup and you threw that winning rock that, that, that won the whole tournament, how sure were you that you were going to make that shot? Uh, I was pretty convinced. You know, it's almost like that dumb confidence where I didn't think I was going to miss, but sometimes you need that to make those kind of shots. After that win, you pulled out another shocking move, the Tebow. <laughs> now, the Urban Dictionary defines Tebowing as... When a person randomly drops to one's <laughs> knee and bows one's head in the fashion of professional football player Tim Tebow. If you go on to win the Roar of the Rings in Ottawa, are we likely to see the Tebow again? You'll probably see the Tebow. <laughs> well, we're going to move on to a, a section of the show that I like to call Fantastic Questions. The first question tonight comes from Diana Muller. As both a skip and a substitute teacher, do you ever find yourself bringing classroom tactics onto the ice? And I want to add a second question to that. Do you ever find that you have to discipline your own teammates? <laughs> sometimes I do. Uh, I think sometimes I can be a little bit too much of a teacher with the team and remember that they're actually teammates rather than students. So uh, sometimes I catch myself, but uh, sometimes they earn it too. We're obviously talking about Colin right now. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Now, I understand that you, you run a junior summer camp. So the question I've got now comes from Jennifer Francis, and she wants to know, what does Camp Carruthers mean to you? Now that I'm getting really close to where I want to be in curling, I'm kind of also thinking, okay, well, when I'm finished curling, what's my legacy going to be? Is it going to be about curling? Is it going to be about me as a teacher? Is it going to be about me as, you know, someone that was good for the sport? And I want to help inspire the youth of tomorrow. That's awesome. Well, I think I've met a true gentleman of the sport. So I want to thank you, Reed, for joining me right here. Thank you. On the button.